everyone. I am excited to show you this new book that I have been gifted. Um, I did show you that I had this one and the Tales from the Forest Kingdom, I think it was called, by Hannah Carlson. Um, the, a lovely person sent me both books, which was ever so kind of them, so thank you again. And um, I did the flip through of the other one a while ago, but I've just got round to doing this one. Well, it's just... I took, I'm doing it the day after and also I've got to fit it in with my other videos really so uh, I've left it for a few days um, I think sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a gap as well so this book is the same size as the other one so you can see it's got the plain cover design which all the ones in this series have as far as I'm aware and it's got this lovely foiled um, cover it looks like a sort of silvery foil on this one which is rather nice and we've got this black um, sort of almost fabric-y binding on the edge and I said with the last one that these are smaller than the other Hannah Carlson like Daydreams it's only a little bit smaller but they are um, slightly smaller size colouring books which I do actually like it means you get your page done more quickly or if you want to get on and finish it you can add a few more touches and you'll still finish it more quickly than maybe a larger sort of Johanna Bassford page or something like that so I'm just going to read you the back and it says welcome to the enchanted witch's cottage enter the gate and wander the path through a lush moonlit garden teeming with miraculous insects and animals through the creaky door you can warm yourself by the cozy hearth surrounded by untold wonders enjoy a quiet moment with the witch and her friends as you lose yourself among her magic potions and spell books now this was on my wish list and what appealed to me was all the magical spell type things now I had thought when I first saw it there would be a good sort of Halloween themed book to do obviously we've passed Halloween now but I'm sure I won't have it finished by next Halloween but also I think magical themes are quite fun all year round anyway so should we have a look okay let's move it along <clears throat> so we have the lovely black and end papers I think they just look so elegant really nice I said that last time didn't I <laughs> and here we have our first um, page we have a lovely um, I was going to say a bottle but it's got a rounded bottom like it's a test tube um, it's very magical looking with our cork and things going on that's really nice and we have our sort of um, copyright information 2022 so it's quite a new book um, which is um, yeah, first published in Sweden in 2021, but the English edition 2022. And then we have the This Book Belongs To, so we've got the cottage in the background. It's a really pretty page. Look at how the trees and the smoke. It's got a slightly magical touch from the smoke, but the rest of it just looks like a really pretty garden. That's really nice. I'm just checking my lights on. It seems a bit dark in here. I think it's because the sun is pouring in, but just not hitting the, uh, hitting the desk and all the area. So we start with some really pretty flowers. Now, it just occurs to me that they look really pretty and lovely. And then I'm like, they're joined together with these little a ribbon. That's really fun. Really different. And here we have a magical looking bunny. Look, look at the wings. I like colouring wings. And all these really pretty looking flowers. Hannah Carlson does a lot of these sort of pretty flowers with these little um, bits in the middle. I think they look so lovely. Oh, and here is the cottage, and it actually looks like quite a normal cottage, quite fun to colour. We've got lovely wood to do, curtains and sort of florals with the fence. It looks good fun, sort of bushes behind the behind the fence. But look, we've got two little cats, and with the stars and things that make it look quite magical. So I think that's really fun. It's just subtle, but I think it's really nice. And this is a really lovely one just to do. You want to do something quick get it finished or maybe you fancy doing a bit of a background but not a whole page you could just do that little bit in there or you could leave it plain just do that bit around there I say just that's a big bit I realize that so you know but it's just a really pretty pretty one I like that okay so here we're in the garden still aren't we look so on the fence we've got the lovely florals but we've got our cats now this cat has got some it's got a great big sort of bead there or some sort of jewel and sort of ribbons and things this one has got what looks like slightly sort of feathery wings almost 
so that's really fun and she has all this sort of the fur is drawn beautifully I think it makes it much easier to colour because you've got bits drawn on already rather than having a straight line you've got a fur look to it which I think is fun now this is a double page I think yeah the fence goes across but not all of it goes down into the spine so you can um if you're doing a background it isn't too tricky or you could just do both pages without the background so here is our witch I'm just checking paper is quite thick so uh, that's really good and we've got our two cats here and here she is now we haven't got any sort of background here drawn in so you could just do it as a plain and simple picture with no background or you could do something mysterious behind them magical you know mixing some pinks and purple pastels or something I don't know but uh, I will decide when I do that page but uh, I think it's rather sweet and on this side we have two pots rather nice but look we have a sort of magical sort of mist around them which I think is great fun and this is sort of going around here and up here but we have these uh, mushrooms toadstools growing in them with these sort of crystals so that's really good fun and there we have some bugs there's always bugs and they're drawn so beautifully and they always look to me like they're metallic and jewels rather than being just a bug um, I think because of the these bits they just look like they're sort of shiny jewels of some sort or another so they'd be really fun to colour and this is a really interesting picture it's quite different we don't have any jewels we have bats it's quite Halloweeny we have this I'm assuming it's lavender but I don't really know and this sort of sickle as if she's been um, cutting some lavender ready for a potion maybe but it's a rather nice I like the simplicity of it um, really now this one I'm trying to work out what, oh it's a candle <laughs> took me a minute so we have a candle here with it there's the wick and the flame sort of goes all the way around and a very ornate looking candle holder so you could just spend a lot of time putting a lot of detail into here or you could do something for the background you know I don't know I am keen to do some backgrounds on some of these pictures but I will keep them very simple um, probably use some pastels because they're very quick and uh, and that you know it helps me to uh, feel more confident really with backgrounds you know it can take a lot of confidence there's a lot of white paper there so there's a lot to cover right I'm just checking my light it really does seem a bit dark anyway if it's dark I will um, edit it and uh, make it a little brighter so this is a bit of a scary picture I've just noticed I was thinking oh what a lovely basket with these um, sunflowers in and, and what's this sort of thing and then I realised it's a snake with wings hmm a bit frightening for me um, I think I'm, I'm if I can pretend that's a fish I might be able to do it, it looks a bit fish like in its face <laughs> mm. there always is I don't think I have so many colouring books with snakes in and of course lots of spiders in and some people aren't keen on those so I think we all have to try and get hold of ourselves really now this reminds me a bit of one of Johanna's pictures Johanna Basford's pictures from her new book where she's got a shelf full of interesting potions and bottles and things and we've got a similar thing here but they aren't but it's slightly got more um, movement in it because we've got the burning candle we can do that as a I would be tempted to maybe do that middle bit as the flame and then maybe all this as the smoke or I'm not sure yet though I'll have to see and we've also got movement here with this chemical reaction going on spilling out I think that's great fun and then we've got our other items as well so not only have we got bottles and candles we've got another candle burning there um, down here we've got all sorts of little things hanging up it's a really fun page lots of little different bits to colour now I guess this is our witch um, she's got a very beautiful um, floral piece in her hair and then around here we have a really interesting is this sort of griffin I think griffin or an eagle I don't know uh, I, I don't know and uh, all these um, lovely things going on around the edge very pretty now this is a very surreal picture so not only do we have apples with with um like looks like quartz doesn't it um coming out of it but we have fish it's the most surreal picture but 
I like colouring fruit, I like colouring flowers, I like colouring fish. Fish with wings? Why ever not? It's a magical picture. I think it's strange but fun. <laughs> now we have a couple of hens and mice. So let's have a quick look. We've got two hens. They've got these um, necklaces on which are quite fun. And then we have these mice and this one is breathing fire. And it's got spikes like a dragon. The dragon mice? I don't know. Magical. And then we have all these lovely mushrooms and berries at the bottom. It's really good fun. Lots going on there. We've got a potential for some sort of background because we've got a line here. I'm showing us the ground. So we've got sky and ground. But uh, again, I would probably just use a soft pastel for most of that because there's a lot there to cover. It's a lot quicker. Right. Now our witch is making something which is great fun. So we have a border around her. It's a little tricky to colour into the spine there, but I think I will manage. Um, it just takes a little bit of patience um, to, and a sharp pencil, really. And what I would particularly do with this page was not put any background outside of that border and then you could, wouldn't have to worry about trying to get right in there. But she looks very pretty. She's got very pretty flowers. Look at the potential for doing that hair. I like colouring hair. And we've got all sorts of magic going on here and all these fun bottles. And I know glass bottles can be a little daunting. I have done tutorials for them before. But I'm really excited to keep trying and trying to improve and find slightly different ways of doing them. I think that's a lot of fun. Ah, oh, look how cute this is. So we have our cat asleep and the little mice curled up. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? Not particularly magical. Obviously, she's the witch's cat. You might want her to do her black being the witch's cat but on the other hand it would be quite difficult to show all the fur if you just did black I would probably not um, I would probably do it maybe grey or brown and then you can see that you can put a bit of different colour fur in there but I'll see now this one is very plain I've seen this one done several times the potential here is to do a, a really impressive background don't have to though you can just have fun colour this Colour these, have some fun with the stars. You don't have to do a big, amazing background. Or you can just get out your Posca pen, do a black, do a purple, do a blue, and then just have fun doing some sparkles. It's You don't have to do them. It was interesting, I had a comment on when I did the flip through of my other book from someone saying, because of the paper in these books, it can take um, watercolour. So there are so many beautiful watercolour pictures um it's much quicker and easier to do a background in watercolor than it is in pencil so if you're a pencil colorist like i am don't cut yourself some slack don't think you've got to do a really amazing background on every picture and it will take you ages and ages you don't have to it's about having fun and that if you'd colored it carefully it could pop right off the page um with the white background so, you know, don't feel that you've got to do anything too much. I would probably put a bit of pastel around there and then, um, quite dark, and then I could make the stars and things, the magic, quite light or sparkly, so it would just stand out a little bit. But I would take, like, 10 minutes, you know. I wouldn't take too long, maybe 15 minutes, really. So here she is. It's a very interesting picture because... From up here, she just looks like she's got a beautiful floral headband on. But down here, we've got bits of fire coming through her hair, or magic. And these have got little faces. All of them have, actually. So that's quite interesting and strange. Or I might not make them fire. I might do them green, like they're little ghouls or something like that, you know. I don't know. Not very imaginative with sort of scary, magical things. It's not my thing, but I just think... I just felt that this was such a pretty, pretty book. So here we have our cat in the window. And we've got all the lovely florals here. Nothing um, too um, outlandish, you know. So some of the pictures are quite normal, not too magical. And some of them, like this one, we've got more magic going on. Even so, we've got our teapot, our cup of tea with all leaves, whatever it is. A, a sort of herbal 
potion or something with the steam and then um, the some crystals but you could color this in sort of magical colors or you could just make it gray like it's steam you know it's up to you but we've got these other bits that imply there's some sort of magic going on I think it's quite fun now here she is look perched on her broomstick which is really fun and a bit of magic around her now if you want her to really stand out from the picture you might find that leaving the background white is going to be the best way to do that sometimes you have to be really careful if you put too much into the background that draws your attention away from the main part of the picture remember this is the main focus of the picture the background needs to just sit there to help it pop out or to um you know enhance it but it isn't always necessary okay so we are brewing something here so this is quite a strange picture we've got a little beetle here it's fine but this little beetle's got candles on his back and uh, this is spewing out some sort of magic but around this border we've got some really pretty things we've got a bat potion crystal stars little toadstools and things this is, and um sword and key a little little ghosty thing clouds and lightning and things and there's it's different at the top and bottom are different so we've got bones there and florals and things like that and spider so it's really good fun there's lots of little things so if you haven't got lots of time and you want to do a few minutes of coloring a day you can grab this one just do a little bug maybe two and then another day do a little couple of toadstools or something it'll take you a while but uh, it'd be fun wouldn't it now oh, we've got a double page and this one does go across the border but I think we're probably okay so this is um, I'm trying to work out if this is our um, cockerel or if it's just uh, you know just a bird I think it looks like it could be our, our rooster or our hen we've got another one here and another one here and they're just flying across um, so in the middle there isn't too much detail so you should be able to manage okay and this is very pretty so we've got our candle and little bits of fire coming out of it that's fun I think that could be quite Christmassy that's why I'm thinking I'm sort of thinking about Christmas a little bit now Christmas colouring anyway and I've been doing Christmas shopping actually so uh, that could be fun to do I've done a lantern one from is it Enchanted Forest by Johanna Passford I think it's got the lantern and I did a little tutorial for that with an easy pastel background which I messed up and then had to redo so uh, so here um, we have just some very pretty florals and little bugs so you could make them all look the same they are drawn the same or you could mix it up and make them different and they've got little crystals inside them as well we have our cat is in a tree um, it looks like a magical tree we've got stars and things and pretty flowers there's sort of crystals hanging from the tree it's really nice and it's got a crown so this is I think that's the picture from the very front of the book or very similar to it no. uh, it's not quite the same very similar and we have these um, three potion bottles and then this um, mushroom I think they're great fun lovely so very very pretty oh, and here we have a lovely bug surrounded by beautiful floral so you could take a color palette and just do all the flowers the same color I mean these two are the same these two are the same those two are the same yeah they're, those three are the same actually so you could do some of them the same colours as each other or not. You could, you know, you have a think, decide what to do. So that's rather fun. And here we have a house on the back of a snail look, with starry eyes. That's rather fun. I like colouring snails. I don't know why. My sister hates them. They eat all her vegetables. <laughs> I eat all my plants too I just don't bother growing plants so this is rather pretty we have the four candles on very ornate looking candlesticks I think um, there's a very warm color palette I would think for that picture very nice now here we have a hmm so we have the florals I'm trying to work out what this is and maybe it's a mirror maybe she's looking in the mirror do you think I don't know. 
and here she looks the cat is giant do you think she's magic that cat that big do you think that's what it is it's fun and we've got a lovely tree with some apples on and this one's got apples on lots of florals going on as well so there's lots of fun elements as well to color oh i've seen um color with claire color this picture you trying out her um some black widow dragon pencil set i think and uh she's just doing all sorts of lovely color combos for that but what was interesting is here we have a lot of blank you know so we've got our main stove and our shelf and our basket and the wood but we've got a lot of blank going on behind so that's some um, something to think about this page is very cute so we've got three bottles they look like perfume bottles but i'm sure they're supposed to be potion bottles especially this one that just something's going on in there and it's really good fun it's it's a more simple picture but obviously you've got the glass to to do now oh this is interesting so we've got our it's so cute little toad on top of a sort of mysterious locked box and the apple's got a little um sword it's not really a sword because it's quite small unless that's a giant apple but i don't think it is that's be quite a small toad though anyway it's quite fun isn't it and here we've just got some florals so again if you want just something i mean it has got some magic um stars and things and we've got a, a very interesting looking ladybird or something i'm thinking ladybird because of the spots there but i think that's really pretty now here she is looking very elegant in her witch's hat with her frog sitting there. She's got a couple of candles, got a spider, and look, she's got a sort of potion bottle on her necklace. And that's rather fun. And these bits here look a bit like um, bat's wings, don't they? That's rather pretty. And this one looks quite scary. Do you think? I don't know what how I would colour that really. I've really got no idea. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, someone next door sneezed very loudly. I have no idea how I would colour that. Whether I would colour them all the same or different colours, I don't know. Interesting one, I have to think about that. And we have another pretty one with really lovely looking, sort of, I mean this isn't a bottle, this is, looks like a, a, a goblet with a lid on. This is sort of jar, and this could be a jar too, with a lovely border. That's rather fun. And some of these are quite intricate though, going to need a really sharp pencil, but that's okay. I've seen this one coloured lots of times um, in the last few weeks because of it being Halloween. And I've seen it coloured beautifully. Of course, pumpkins, you know, we all associate that with Halloween. Um, even those of us that don't celebrate it. And I understand from what people have been telling me who live over in the... in um, the states that they keep their pumpkins out almost um, until Thanksgiving and I think it sounds lovely to have all that beautiful orange autumnal colour outside on your front porch or drive or whatever It'd be really pretty but we don't really do that here right so we have I'm sure this is a griffin and the cat there's a little crystal ball which is good fun and uh, I'm not sure what this is but it's it looks like a very ornate brooch or something like that. Very pretty. I um, can see there's supposed to be lots of gemstones on there, so that's fun. Now look at this dragon. Look, it's a spell book, but there's nothing written in it. Oh, but look, here's the pen. Oh, that's fun. But what are these? They look like needles or pins. Why would you need those? Hmm, I'm intrigued. What would that be? Because surely when you're writing a spell book, you just need a pen. And what's this? Oh, I see what that is. It's like um, the seal for the book, like it's a clip or something to keep the book closed. Maybe the spells might escape. And there's a key. Okay. Now we have critters here. So we have our cats. Both winged this time, look. And we have birds. They're all sitting on the ledge of a tree, I think. And we've got some of these little little ghosties and the and the uh, little flying beetles, I guess they are. Very nice. Ooh, I like this one. Wishing well. So we've got it looks all looks quite normal. Wishing well, bucket, florals, and then we've got some of our little fire creatures coming out of the candle. 
I think they are. I think that's what they are. They're fun. They could be really fun to colour like fire. We could leave them white or, you know, green. I don't know. And here is our witch. Look at that. I love these hats. A bit like Matchstick Mouse. She's a witch, isn't she? It's her hat. Um, lovely hair. And we have this sort of cloud with the sun and moon there. That's really pretty. Oh, here she is again with her cauldron. That's going to take quite some colouring. It's quite a big space to colour that cauldron. But I think I'd probably use prismas for that. They're quite good at colouring. I'm getting used to my prismas. I'm more confident and colouring a large area with a graduation of colour, which is what I would do darker here and shiny in the middle. I'd probably do it all black. Um, I think the prismas would suit that better. Now we have a flying key. It's a bit Harry Pottery, isn't it? Um, it's really beautiful. Look at these florals and sort of ribbons. That's lovely. Really pretty. Oh, we have some sort of hanging flowers. We used to have these. My mum used to do macrame and make these little holders, but these are aren't really knotted up are they so we have um, a little butterfly bat this one just just pops and we have another bat over here and butterfly another bat this one's quite ornate that's rather fun very pretty Ooh. do you think the things around the outside are what's inside I want to think that <laughs> We had these little bits around, they're quite similar to the other one that I was saying where you could just do a little bit. So uh, that's rather fun. And now we have a bird with a, with three eyes and a bell. Very interesting. And an antler. Hmm. We have crystals, but still beautifully drawn. Oh, now this is a sort of double page, isn't it? So she, they're both sitting on a moon looking at each other. It's rather sweet, isn't it? I think that's lovely. All the clouds and stars and things. I expect that's the end, is it? Oh no, we've got one more. Lucky potion. Lucky potion. Look, there's butterflies coming out of it. Oh, how lovely. That's our last one. Now, I was going to colour one from this book. So what I'm going to do is colour this one at the front because it's quite small. I've just got to grab some paper to go behind the page. Oh, sorry, it's, it's misbehaving already. There we go. We'll pop that in there just to protect the page. And I will come in a bit closer. There we go. Now I grabbed my back Black Widow pencils because I just thought they were seem the right thing to do for a witchy picture. So I'm just going to open them out and spread them out. I've got my spider set, which are the ow, <laughs> my elbow, which are the original set. Oops, and this is the um, cobra set, which I um, always keep covered up so I can't see that snake. <laughs> and then I've got the scorpion set as well. So we'll pick and choose as we go. I'm going to start with the cork. Um, I'm looking around and I think the spider set has the best browns for that. Oops, so I'm going to grab my first one. Yeah, this is the foxy brown. Now the spider set doesn't look like this anymore. The new sets have the coloured end, but as far as I'm aware from everything I've read and heard, the um, the colours are identical. So if you have the more modern set, it will be the same but it doesn't matter if it's slightly different. I'm going to just put a layer of brown across the whole cork to start with. I'm starting lighter and I'm going to go a little bit darker. While I'm doing this I'm also thinking about what colour to do this um, bottle. I'm going to a tube, I'm not sure what to call it, um, vial I suppose it is, um, because I'm not going to do a background so I need to be able to make it coloured so that um, we can sort of make it look glassy. I'm not really explaining myself very well. I'm going to put a few darker areas in where I think this might be a bit darker. The sun is flashing. 
is because the tree outside my window. I'm just going to sort of mark those lines in a little more. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to um, do it in a colour, but I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the tarantula, which is a slightly darker shade of brown, to do um, a little more. So I want to mark in those dark areas that I have already marked with my lighter brown. I'm just going to overemphasize them a bit. Also the edge, just a little like that. I'm thinking there would be some shadow from the bottle. So I'm just going to try and draw a little line along there. Okay, now we've got leaves in this bottle, so I'm thinking I'd quite like the bottle to be green to sort of match the leaves. But what we need to do is think about how we're going to do it. Are the leaves going to be lighter than the bottle or darker than the bottle? And I'm thinking I'll do the leaves lighter, I think a darker bottle will look better. So I'm thinking that this colour is the venom from the um, Cobra set would be quite a nice bottle green but the leaves I would do probably in a slightly lighter shade of bluey green I'm just having a look at what I've actually got so I'm going to start now when I do um, this sort of part this sort of a bottle I tend to do a lot of layers near the edge and then less in the centre and there's several reasons for this, I've explained this before, but what I tend to think is that if you make it look more shadowy on the edge, it makes it look more rounded and you can't always see that right away. You have to sort of do that, complete the whole thing for the illusion to work. And um, also makes the bottle look shiny because we've put a bit in the middle, it makes it look more glassy and shiny. We will add some white, but I don't know whether um, I'm going to do the same with this bit, whether the white's going to um, work on top of this green. Sometimes um, the Black Widow's changed the colour of the white a little bit, but I think it's generally the blue and the pinks that do that. Okay, I'm going to leave this, um, no, in the centre of those little circles, I'm going to uh, colour in this colour, oh, my sharpener, it's got a lead in it, no. I'm just going to get a normal pencil to poke it out with, I would never try and poke a lead out with a coloured pencil, I use these um, Stedler Norris ones. They're quite good. I can't get the sharpness to go back together. There we go. I need to get a new one for in here because this, well, I need to get or change the lead because this one keeps breaking. But here we go. So sorry, I'm going to just put a little touch of green inside each of these. You could do them so they look like they're jewels and do them a different colour to the glass but I'm going to just colour in that other bit a different colour so I'm going to leave that for now and come down to the edge this is quite a big area to colour with a small pencil but uh, we'll manage it so I want it much darker all the way on the edge so while my pencil's nice and sharp I'll do that it's actually much easier to get your colour down into the tooth of the paper when you're using a sharper pencil. So do your darker areas with the sharper pencil or your more fid fiddly areas like we did there. And I'm going to try to fade it like I did here. Um, but at the bottom, while inside this line, I'm going to keep it dark all the way through. And then from and go right to the edge 
and then from now on this inside bit we're going to keep that light bit going through now you could or you might want to do a glow around the stars or around the leaves I think that's a little bit too tricky for me I'm in the mood for doing something very simple so that's what I'm going to just start to fade my green as I bring it in and I'm not going to worry about what's going on with the foreground um, I might when I do the other ones in the book I might mix it up a bit but uh, today as I say just in the mood for something quite simple so that's what I'm going to do so I can use this white bit as a guide to work out where the centre is it doesn't have to be exact exact but you want it to be fairly well lined up I'm pressing quite lightly now because I can darken but it's quite hard to lighten once you've put down colour it stains the paper so I'm trying not to go too hard I know some of you tell me that you're heavy handed and it's not a problem that I've had to be honest but I think I was always too light handed instead so I was I always had too much of a light touch and that was because a lack of confidence so I didn't want to um, press too hard in case I made a mistake or in case I'd chosen the wrong colour or whatever and sometimes I still do that but I try to build up my colour so that I do end up with a more intense colour unless it's a particular style or purposeful decision if you know what I mean so in the centre here I'm going to leave that quite pale I'm not going to darken that up too much but what I am doing here is just trying to even out the colour but like making things darker trying to make it lighter if you feel that you've got quite a heavy touch it's just practice and I say just I realise <laughs> it takes a lot of time and some of us need more than others but uh, it you know it comes just have to be patient with yourself forgiving of yourself we're always going to find things wrong with what we do whatever it is however hard we work however much we practice try and be proud of your achievements and your improvements okay i'm happy with that like that for now and i'm going to do the rest and then decide whether for sure i'm happy but for now i am and I'm going to use this Everglade green because I think it's quite a similar shade to the background but not exactly the same. It's quite a light version look. Slightly bluey green. And for these um, leaves I'm going to go darker around that sort of stem and then just lighten it up towards the edge. I'm going to try and make it an even um, change from light to from dark to light but it's not that easy I'll just do my best and I will remember that leaves are from nature and they don't always look how you would expect so if I do something wrong I can just pretend this that was exactly how the leaf was it doesn't matter so there we go now we've got this tipped over bit I'm going to do that in a darker I like to sometimes make those bits just look a little bit different so that was my plan I'm going to put a little bit of shade shadow underneath but not too much okay now we have our stems to do and I want a colour that's still quite bluey green I'm just looking at my um, I'm thinking maybe this one will work but I need to scrub it on a bit of paper and I don't have any oh hang on yes I do Yeah, I think that will work. This is the turquoise from the Scorpion set. And I'm going to do the um, these with it. Let's try and do them quite solid so they stand out as being different. I think that's quite fun. Now, I'm thinking about the stars. Mm, and this bit 
I'm thinking I'm going to do this bit with this pencil, so I'm going to keep this um, turquoise in my hand. Now I want to try to shade a little bit, but it's a really small space, and my first job is to sharpen it. And then I need to explain to you what I'm going to try to do, and then unsuccessfully do it while you watch. <laughs> so underneath the rim of the bottle I think it would be darker. So what I want is this loopy bit to be darker at the top than at the bottom and this little piece to be darker here than there. So I'm going to attempt to do that by holding my page really still, putting more layers here and then softening it towards the bottom. And there I've left a bit of white. I think I'm going to do that on all of them if I can. But as I say, it's really small. If you are struggling, um, alternative, get a um, silver gel pen, make it silver like it's a little chain. That was something I had considered doing and I think it would probably stand out better that way. So that's an idea to try. There we go. I'm overdoing those bits I want dark. Now I want my stars to look a little bit more magical. So, I'm just looking to see what I've got, yes. Oh, what have I got in here? I've got my, oops, um, Jedi Roll glitter pens. I'm going to be doing those, using those. We have got a turquoisey green, which I'm going to grab, and a silver. The turquoisey green is hashtag 729, number 729. You don't have, um, notes? No, they don't have names. Okay, so I'm going to use that one and I am going to use it on the leaves. Just thinking first. I'm going to go around the edge of the stem. Okay. And just add some sparkle. And also go around the edge of the leaf. I don't want to go over the whole thing because it will cover up the colouring I've done. You could use a glaze pen if you've got the ones, um, not a glaze pen, no, um, if you've got the glitter pen that's just a see-through like a glue, um, like glitter glue, um, it's number 700, that would work. You could put that all over the whole thing and you would still see your green colouring through. But I just fancy doing, I think I'm going to do these little bits as well, just for fun. Now you may not be able to see what I'm doing at all, but anyway, I will show you in a minute. Let's just move that box over there. Now this one is the silver. It is number 744, I think. I'm just going to test it because I'm paranoid that it isn't silver because it looks really dark. Well, it is. So I'm just going to do the whole star in this, but I'm going to try and keep the black outline because I don't know if it will show through the pen. Now the reason for that is because I'm not getting rid of any black lines on anything else. It's going to look a little bit odd if the stars don't have a black outline. You could do your stars white, leave them white, but this one in the middle where we've got the glasses white or paler, it wouldn't show up. So that's why I decided to do them in silver and I think it will go quite well with the green. Now lastly I'm going to add some white to our glass to make it look more glassy. I'm just trying to find the right pen. Here it is. I'm going to use my white Posca. This is the PC1MR which is the very smallest tip and we've already got lines drawn on here which I can use as guidance. So we've got some lines drawn here. I'm actually going to leave those and just put my white mark bottom and what I do with white is, as it's drawn here, run it parallel to your bottle. So, I, I'm in two minds. Do I go over the black or do I do my own line? I think I'll go over the black here. And because this is one of our darkest areas of green, the white should show up more. If I try to put white in the middle here, it would barely show because we've got all that light area already there.
Now you could use more white if you want to. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Oh, that's the train. But there are these marks on the leaves. I'm not going to go over those because I've left those pale. And as I said before, it's not going to show up on the pale areas. I'm just going to put another layer down. Now that's dried a bit because because I was covering black, it doesn't always show up very well. It can look a bit grey. So just popping a bit more on top can help. You do have to time it right though, because if it isn't dry, it, you'll actually end up taking off the gel pen rather than or paint. Sorry paint pen you end up taking the paint off rather than adding it to it so there is our finished um picture i'm going to tip it to the light Oops. so you can see the shine hopefully i'm trying to work out which angle i need to be so you can see the shine i think it's there but i don't know it looks quite light there so there is our bottle so i hope that was okay i had fun with that it's quite nice just doing one, one at a time and just leaving it so I hope that was um, okay for you um, and a big thank you to the lovely person that sent this book to me I know I'm going to have a lot of fun with it um, Halloween or not and uh, and that's lovely so thank you for watching um, enjoy the rest of your day please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already I really appreciate that and happy colouring <laughs>